live from Venice Beach. It's Coffee Talk. Hey, it's Mark <laughs> Podolsky, the Land Geek with the LandGeek.com, and I'm with outside David Benalis, the Facebook Whisperer. David, where are you? I couldn't do this in the 119 heat where I'm at. <laughs> I am at Venice Beach right now, so I just got done with my uh, my second job. Now I'm here at my favorite job, uh, which is getting to talk to you. I don't even call this a job. This is like a luxury for me. Oh, my gosh. Venice Beach. What's, what's yeah. the weather? Look how beautiful that is. I need a sweater. It's so cold here, Mark. Yeah. That, oh, man. That's nice. Well, this is part of the luxuries you can have with uh, – well, thank you. You can work anywhere. There's an internet connection. Right now, I've got a good internet connection. Wow. What's up, Bryce? Good morning. I'm going to have a little virtual cup of coffee with Bryce. Those guys drink coffee black, man. At least you put a honey. <laughs> no, no. I'm done with the honey. You're done with the honey? Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing cinnamon powder now for my sweetener. I've, okay. really, I've really gone as, as little sugar as possible now. Wow. I, Impressive, I, right? You know. Cool. That was my diet overall, but yeah, coffee. cool. I'm, I'm really a, a bona fide coffee drinker. So, um, for those of you on Facebook Live, don't know who we are. It's Mark Pulis, the Land Geek, thelandgeek.com, and David Benalis, uh with SimpleLifeLand.com, the Facebook Whisperer. We are professional land investors. Um, I've been investing uh, full time since 2001. I've done over 5,200 land flips. Uh, David, you've been in this about a year now. Yeah, I'm a little bit over a year. Um, I'm about right around 40. 40 deals or so and about i don't know i don't want to discourage anybody about 5k a month in land yeah i mean look that that moves the needle in a, in a passive income way so you know it it really is the best passive income model because really when you boil it down what, what we do is we buy an asset 23 cents in the dollar we then sell that asset one time we get recurring income without any tenants toilets termites or trash and because we're not dealing with tenants we have to worry about dodd frank respo or the safe act and the beautiful part about this is with software we are 90 percent automated it is just a machine so it's real estate investing it's passive income without the typical headaches is it easy no, no. no. <laughs> is it simple yes yeah i would say so yeah. nothing's easy no but like how many businesses like are do it exist out there where there's very low startup money required, right? Very little knowledge. Like I don't need a bachelor's degree. To, you know, I don't need to practice real estate law to be an investor. Like all I need is you know enough you know get up and go to pick up a phone once in a while or put up an ad, mail an offer. Like if you can you lick a stamp, you could do this business. You know what? And, and that I think that's one of the biggest myths of real estate investing is you need a lot of money, right? Oh, yeah. I, I can't do it. I, I I need a lot of money. Um, a good example is myself. I started with $3,000. Um, a better example is Duran. He started mm -hmm. with $800. Yeah. An even better example is Paul Mendel completely broke. So Paul has no money <laughs> at this point. He's got like a couple hundred bucks, sends out offers. He locks up a deal, right? Okay. And he extends out the due diligence. He doesn't even do a $50 option. He extends out the due diligence, right? Yeah. He tells him, I'm going to close in 90 days. Well, he doesn't, he does the due diligence for like a couple of days and then he sends out the neighbor letters. The yeah. neighbor wants to buy it and he does a, du a dual closing. So for the cost of a few stamps, he made himself like five grand and then he took that five grand and then went yeah. on his way. Right. Look at this, Seth, me and Bryce are 50% automation just interviewed for our closing agent this morning. Might be closer to 65% by end of week. That's, you know, Boom. So I, I was talking to Mike earlier in the week, and so what we came what it came down to is I believe that if you're not scaling, you are really close to failing. So yes, you can do this all by yourself, but why replace one job with another job? Like I think what people are attracted to this business are is, you know, that you can you know get it to a point where you are ninety five percent automated, and you know you're at Venice Beach working two hours a week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna write the book, the two hour work week, because um, I mean, really, that's how many hours I work in frontier properties with land investing. Um, and you know, here's a good, good example: like Aaron, he's joining GeekPay today. So here's here's one of my biggest pain points was automating the note collection, right? Yeah. Dealing with the borrowers, 
setting up the note, doing the doing the math and the amortization when you when you charge interest, um, borrower management, calling up, hey, what's my current balance? Uh, can I make a prepayment? It's now all web based, mm-hmm. and I created something. I scratched my own itch for the first time. I actually said, okay, everything else out there is terrible, so I'm going to create something that's going to be perfect for our business. And look, is it perfect? No, it's software. It's yeah. never going to be perfect, but it's way better than anything else out there. And our pricing is way better. So we're going to save you time and save you money, which in software is pretty rare. So I'm really proud of uh, GeekPay. So for those of you that you know want to start automating your payments, go to geekpay.io and uh, I'll set up a demo with you for sure. There's nothing better, Mark, than money hitting the bank that you didn't work for that month. Yeah, so look, there's a lot of effort right, put into marketing and sales, and then you know getting that down payment. It's a huge victory, but right. then that following month, when that monthly payment starts kicking in, such a good feeling. I remember that first time that happened to me, like I just couldn't stop smiling for like six hours. Like my cheeks were sore. <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah, it, it's it's you start getting addicted to it. Oh yeah, like you know it's it's a weird thing. Like I, I really hate selling for cash now. Um, I way, I way prefer uh, doing the notes. Yeah. All right, here's Seth. One week, thirteen of my self journal. What week are you on? Have accomplished two of my goals and one third of my third goal. Need to ramp that up a little more. My next thirteen weeks. Oh, I love it. I love it. So um, Seth's working on the on his twelve week, thirteen week year, mm-hmm. um, doing his his goals. Um, you know, it's interesting. The way I do my goal setting, um, I really kind of look at my compass worksheet. So I do it every week. Yeah. Um, and I don't really go exactly on the 12 week year schedule, although I do think it's it's great. And I do I, I do the parts of it that work for me, and then I do other parts that, that you know I get rid of the parts that don't work for me. But um, overall though, there is something magical about setting very specific goals. Right, your brain starts to work on solving these problems. Like your brain just wants to solve problems. If your brain doesn't yeah. have any problems to solve, it'll create problems. Right, that's anxiety. <laughs> right, that's so, so true. You, so you need to set goals like every day. It's like okay, and it, you know it's interesting. Is uh, Josh Waitzkin, who's like this guy, who's like uh, one of like the top guys, like hedge fund managers hire this guy. He's a performance yeah. coach. Um, he's most famous for searching for Bobby Fischer. He's like one of the best chess players in the world for a long time have you read his book i read his book and one of the interesting things that i took away from his book was around six o'clock at night he'll write down in a journal what he wants his unconscious to work on that night right so he doesn't do it right before bed he does it way before bed and he starts he's just like i've got this problem i want my unconscious to solve and so i've added that yeah uh my journal is what do i want my unconscious to solve and uh, I'll go to bed that night, and I'll just let my unconscious kind of work on it, and I'll wake up the next morning with a little bit more clarity. Does it work for me every single time? No, because I'm not Josh Waitzkin, who's like a genius. <laughs> but it, it does work, and you do get a little bit more clarity when you have this uh, intention, if you will, like this specific intention yeah. to do things. So, Oh, Josh Waitzkin. What a great book. So I, you know, I listened to an Audible. I was driving down to Palm Springs to meet some family. And listen to it both uh, there and back, finished it. Man, what an excellent example of just mastering anything. Like he got into ch- Tai Chi after he mastered chess. Yeah. And so he applied everything uh, about just breaking, you know, deconstructing an entire uh, art form, you know, Tai Chi. But we can apply that to land business, Mark. Like, so we can deconstruct an entire business to the, the smallest, you know, the, the tiniest pieces to execute upon and we lay that out for people like <laughs> man, it's no, a luxury that it's no we, we really have it's it's really kind of cool what we've done because we're an inch wide and a mile deep um we don't talk about flipping houses we don't talk about private money or you know anything else in real estate it's just this little niche in land investing and we've really solved every single pain point along the way and yeah. Um, because you know, ultimately that's what you pay for is you, you can always make more money. You can't get more time. We're saving you all this time and avoiding all this, you know, 
sort of trial and error and pain and hopefully avoiding huge mistakes. As yeah. Well. So it's, it's great. But um, so Aaron uh, has been crushing it. He's a land hustler. He's a land hustler. Scott's been telling us. So Aaron, are you going to come on the podcast and talk about some of your recent deals? Yeah, that would be pretty I awesome. I hopefully, I'm, hopefully so on. I'm pretty sure the community is sick of hearing me on Facebook all the time. We need another voice. <laughs> Not at all. It, it, it is nice, this community, though. Like, it, yeah. it would be nice to have other people like, like yeah, yeah, you know, talking. Yeah. It's, it's, it, I think it's what's, what's interesting about the community is that at a certain size, when you get too big, people mm-hmm. feel like, well, I don't need to talk. I don't need yeah. to say anything. And they're, they're more shy when, like, uh, because I think there's been studies on, like, like over 75, people tend to, like, withdraw, right? Mm-hmm. Like 75 or less, it's, it's, it's a more intimate community. So we might be better off, like, breaking up communities in the 75, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's kind of what we, we've already not actively done, but that's kind of happened, right? Where you'll have people that are near full-time in this business. So, right. you know, coaching VIPs. And you know that maybe that tier of students very active within the group, and then there's another tier below that, you know the self starters, and yeah. So I, there's probably like an invisible line within these groups that do have that. But right. Well, you know, what I do them. love is the flight school groups. You know, after they oh, graduate man. flight school, they still stay in their group and they still help each other and yeah. they still talk, and that's a very small intimate group. So in the the June flight school, Yaren Carroll, she's pretty much taken it upon herself to. You know, right after class is over, like just post, you know, what was your biggest takeaway? And she talks about her favorite, uh, you know, topics Scott talked about. I think that is so, um, so good for the community, like to actually have someone to, you know, take charge like that. Like, I'm just, I'm so happy that she's done that. Um, I want to instill that for every flight school class, like just right after class is over. What was your biggest takeaway? And like the conversation just makes the entire room smarter. It's right. amazing. Right. So I put a poll up on the, uh, was it, I think it was, I think it was the mastermind group. Mm-hmm. Um, the next big course that we're going to create to solve a problem. And everyone, I'm going to say everyone, but yeah. a lot, like it was overwhelming majority was the VA management creating systems and processes. So yeah. what we're going to do then is we're going to create this course in conjunction with our done for you VA team which is if you want to get on that list, um, we just took our second beta member today, uh, Victor Reynolds. Cool. Putting them through their paces. So it's VAs at the land geek.com. Get in the nice. queue. And um, if you're a coaching client, you have priority. But after that, um, we will start taking other people on. And we've got an office space in the Philippines. Uh, we have three VAs. Whoa. Yeah. Working in the business. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Brian Potter, who's our first beta client, has had, you know, glowing reviews. So, um, you know, obviously we're not ready to scale until everything is super nice and tight, but we're, we're working on it. It's there. I think that's a great model to apply to anyone's, anyone's land business, right? So you want to get the basics done, do a little sample. Like when I hired a VA for due diligence the first time, I didn't give her 15 properties to, here, do due diligence. Like, here, do one. Let me see how it goes. Right. And then from there, okay, that went well. Okay, do it a second time. Okay, why was it faster the first time versus the second time around? Like, are you milking it now? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. yeah. So what I love is that we're not going to have that issue with the, uh, the Lanky VAs. Like, you guys are building a great team down there. And, yeah, it just they love the reciprocation between, you know, having full-time work you know, be, being taken care of and providing value in return, it's going to be a great thing. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'm excited. Ben Clark. Um, well, wait, we got a bunch of comments here I haven't seen. Oh, we're so oblivious. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right, let's see. Uh, yeah, I like to constantly apply elimination to goals. I love it. Let's see. Ben Clark. In the beginning, how did you balance your time? That's a great question. Yeah. Mailing. Due diligence, deeds, marketing, full-time job, and full-time dad. Time, energy, management ideas. David, I'll let you take this one, and then I'll tell you about my story. Yeah, balance my time. (laughs) 
So I did get up a little bit earlier um, each morning. And so I would try to squeeze in a lot of stuff uh, right after I finished my obligations at work. So I was, you know, licking and sticking a lot in the beginning. And I should have got that off my plate from step one. So that's one way to save time. I know that you were, uh, Ben was at least, you know, posted a few pictures, you know, folding, stuffing, you know, stamping. That's fun for like the first 200. After that, you're like, okay, let me just do something else. So get that off your plate first. And then this way you can be handling the due diligence part. Um, fancy hands is going to be great in the beginning. It's, so it's not, it's never too early to start implementing delegation in small portions. So, you know, learn fancy hands that that platform and have someone call the county for you. So Scott Todd only had two hours a week. You know, he's a dad, husband. And so he was able to do that. So one hour focused in the business, one hour on the business. Um, I, I kind of just really messed that up. I just, I blew so many evenings, you know, working this business, but it's paying off now. Um, yeah, I, I led to a few tough conversations with my wife, but <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, you learn, right? So no one's ever going to have it perfect from the get go. Like you're figuring out how to fit this into your life and you'll find a rhythm very quickly that works for your family, that works for you. Um, so just, there are so many tools available to help you manage time that anything's possible. Even if you have one hour a week, you can move the needle forward in this business. Mark, how'd you handle it? Yeah, I mean, so I was a full-time investment banker, miserable, right? And, um, you know, I had to carve out time anywhere I could because also I had a newborn baby um, as well. So I'd get home and the baby be crying and, you know, I was like on daddy duty. So really I'd be working, I'd get up like around five in the morning because I have to be at work because uh, we were working, you know, East Coast time. Yeah. So I have to be in my office by seven. Um, when I was doing investment banking okay. and, and dealing with clients. So um, I, w- I would give it five and I would work a solid focused hour. And the way I would manage my time in that beginning was I was only focused on deal flow, deal flow, deal flow, deal flow, deal flow, right? I didn't think about anything else in the very beginning. I just wanted, I wanted deals, right? Cause I knew after my first auction in New Mexico yeah. um, that money is made on the buy, right? Because, you know, I, I was like, I can't believe because you know, how, how, like, I mean, I hate to say the word, it was pretty easy to sell. Um, but it wasn't as easy to find the deals in the beginning for me, right? Yeah. But selling was really easy. So I'm like, well, if I can just get these deals, I know they'll sell. And mm-hmm. today it's so much easier, like, really easy because, like, you can get a whole, you can just wholesale it out to our community, right? Yeah. Like, you don't even have to go to a platform and sell yourself. You don't have to go to the neighbors or Craigslist or, you know, eBay or, you know, oh, I don't know, little little site that David likes to work on. <laughs> yeah, Facebook. I mean, I'm naming my second child Facebook. I know. I know. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, so the tools today are so much better than, than when I started. And then, so, you know, to save time then, I would I would have these very focused hours in the morning and then, you know, maybe an hour at night before bed. And um, I was just so excited because I was seeing results, right? Yeah. So I, I, I was seeing like, oh my gosh, there's an end in sight for me if I can just keep doing this and keep doing this. And so it took me 18 months to have that land investing income exceed my investment banking income. And then I quit my job for real. And then like I went crazy because like I had all this pent up energy <laughs> from years <laughs> Of, a, of, you know, working for somebody else. Now I'm working for myself. And then it was like fun, right? Yeah. And so the time management was just like, I was just an explosion of energy and just, you know, went crazy. But um, yeah. So, but then, you know, I, I would say that systems and processes for me really didn't start getting built until probably 2007. Yeah. Um, you know, so I was just doing everything myself. I don't know that's, if that's a good answer or not. I mean, it's, it's not right. Look, I've made all the mistakes for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> million dollar mistakes for all of you. Um, so I, don't, I, don't, I, don't do what I did. I think we both touched on it, right? If you can get an hour or two hours a day, that's enough, right? So 18 months for you. For some reason, I'm magically going to be at 18 months as well. Um, that's yeah, just a, Scott, a magical Scott's month. Hot. 17 months, three days. 
everyone's different, right? If it takes someone 36 months, it's still an investment in their future selves and their future family. Like, yeah. like who cares about 18 months, right? If it takes 60 months, that's still, you know, 60 months is coming no matter what. It's coming Eight, no matter what. 18 yeah. months is coming no matter what. You might as well start this land business, stop overanalyzing this, and just jump in already. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. You know, and I, I'm reading this book now from Mel Robbins. I tell you about this. No. Uh, 543, the 54321. Connie White's out at the last boot camp. She's like, Mark, I know you're dealing with anxiety. Read this book. So I immediately bought it. That and I'm just, I'm just now getting to it. And okay. like, it's this crazy like metacognition hack where if you're, if you're, if you're hesitating to do something, you, you just kind of bypass that little voice in your brain that kind of gives like convinces you not to do it. Yeah. So like, <laughs> right, or whatever it is. Yeah. Like, you know, and, and you just go five, four, three, two, one, launch, go. Right. Wow. You know, hesitating to, to have that difficult conversation with your VA, five, four, three, two, one, go. Right. Wow. I hesitating like to, you know, get up in the morning, go to the gym, five, four, three, two, one, go. And you just go. And, and then so it's this way to take action um, and kind of trick your brain. Like, I'm just going to do it right now. If it's yeah. a huge long term planning thing. Yeah. You don't yeah. like you don't do that. But if it's something like, you know, you need okay. a little bit of courage, yeah, a little bit of self motivation for you, five, four, three, two, one, go and you do it. So it's so this is what I want people to do. Go to landgeek.com the landgeek.com forward slash training scroll to the bottom look at schedule a call five four three two one go schedule a call with me let's talk about this let's see if it's right for you it's not right yeah. for everybody yeah so go here go to www.thelandgeek.com forward slash training book a call with david or mike by the way aaron uh you know i was hazing him like i know you've been crushing it this is crazy he says two big cash deals and my first three thousand. Oh my goodness! One hundred and eighty-one percent ROI. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That's like like it's too good to be true. Like, what did you buy it for a dollar? And he's like, before I officially like own the property. Oh shoot! <laughs> so since he didn't use any of his own money, he probably, it's probably like infinite ROI. Oh my goodness! That's, um, that's ridiculous, man. So, so we're gonna get Aaron on the podcast to talk about it. Man, or the table. Killer, Aaron. That's a great job, man. Yeah. That's out to you, bro. Seth wow. got his website changes made. Um, oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna start uh, showing those uh, that new segment um, in the Facebook group or the the Land Geek uh, Mastermind group where we look at somebody's website and we make changes and we recorded that so everybody cool. can kind of benefit from that. Um, Danielle's working on that. So we got a lot of changes going on with the mastermind group um, to add more value. Um, and he's like, also our email leads are now automated. My favorite word. Ah, automation. That's a beautiful thing, right? Yeah. Ivy, your podcast with Rory Vaden was great. Apply the principles of leverage to time using systems. The same night I listened, I freed 20 hours a week through simplifying. Talk about moving the needle in your life. What are you going to wow. do in those 20 hours, Ivy? That's crazy. 20 wow. hours. Man, if someone says they don't have enough time, follow what this guy was doing. They just did. Oh, Holy cow. Wow. That's crazy. I can't imagine. Like, uh, You can always make yeah. more money. You can't make more time. But, man, apparently you can't make more time. <laughs> yeah. So, Ivy, uh, I recommend his book, too, Procrastinate on Purpose. Um, really good book as well. Uh, Steve Harris, is it possible? to be successful in this business without talking on the phone. David, what do you think? Can you do this without talking? Uh, so you can – I had to have a phone conversation with uh, the person I'm buying land from to tell him how I'm going to send him a deed. So there is a conversation there. So in the beginning, like you kind of have to talk to people. When you sell a property, okay, I sold my first property without talking to him. So, yes, yeah. you – can make some sales without talking to them, but this is not an e-commerce business. You do have some FaceTime with people. Uh, you're going to have to hop on the phone once in a while. You're going to have to call the county. So yes, you do need to you know pick up the phone once in a while for this business until you scale, right? So go through the pain being on the phone for 18 months, and then after that, you know have someone else make calls for you. Mark, is your back okay? Yeah, I'm, I've got to like stretch a little bit. Yeah. So, um, you know, what's funny is, uh, you know, Steve, I would say that 
this is ultimately, especially if you're selling on terms, it's a relationship business. And you want to get to know that customer that's going to be paying you for the next five years, right? Yeah. In some way. Um, not everything can be automated. You can't automate relationships. That being said, at some point, like David said, you don't have to be the one doing it. You can hire a VA or an acquisition manager to replace you. But I'd say in the very beginning, if you don't have enough deal flow um, or you're just not competent enough to even train somebody how to do this because you haven't done it yourself, um, I don't know if you can avoid the phone. You might be able to. You could send links and you could, you could, you know, probably do a lot via email and texting. But there is, so, there is something intimate about hearing someone's voice and talking on the phone. I, I, you know, I remember one of my mentors said to me, Mark, and I repeat this a lot. Uh -huh. the, the secret to making money online is the phone. And I agree. Um, and I, I think, I think it's, I, I, you know, when's the last time anybody talked to anybody on the phone? I know we don't like to do it, but when we do it, it is now becoming like a novelty. And, um, <laughs> you know, you know that it is it is something like i don't know it is evolving so like more stuff is going towards text and messenger however so here's a little secret for me to close on when i'm closing deal on facebook is the beauty of messenger is that you can you know push to push to talk so i hold down send him a message it's got my voice so i'm not actually hopping on the phone but they're still hearing from me there's something calming knowing that you're working with a human being it's just, you know, I can't explain that part versus, you know, who is this person behind the email? Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, especially when you're talking real money, right? Like yeah. If I'm, I'm going to invest 29 grand with somebody over the next, let's say, 10 years, I probably want to talk to them. <laughs> yeah. you know? Exactly. Um, you know, you know, even 5,000, I'd want to talk to them. You know, if it's a quick cash $2,000 deal, you bought it for, you know, 500, you're flipping it for 2,000, maybe you don't need to talk to them. Maybe you just send them a checkout link. And that would be it. And you could say thank you. But that's a transaction yeah. versus the relationship. And you then put them on your buyer's list and you can send them emails to deal with the week. But I, I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't I – think I think it would be irresponsible to say, yeah, you can be successful in the business without talking on the phone. I, I just don't feel like – I'm just going to say a firm no. I, you need I'm to pick gonna, up yeah, the phone. I think you got to pick up the phone. Yeah. Um, so, Yeah. Ben, here, Ben Clark, talking to people I'm buying from has been really good for me. Trust is good for both sides. Trust is earned, not free. See? That's a, that's yeah. a readable comment right there. Um, Billy, Qua Billy, I mean, maybe I shouldn't say his whole name. Happy People Club. Finally trying Facebook again after talking to David. W Billy and I had a great talk. Uh, was it last night? No, no, it was two nights ago or like two evenings ago. Great talk. Is um, Billy going into one-on-one -on -one coaching? So we are figuring out what's most appropriate for him. It's either one-on-one -on -one or uh, flight school. I think there's you know tons of value for flight school. So <laughs> you may not like that I do this, but I teach him how to hack the coaching. So why not build a solid foundation of flight school? Apply that money towards a one-on-one -on -one coaching program, where instead of you know taking the first eight weeks and figuring out how to, you know how to do the basics in the business, go straight to systems building and scaling. So for, for Billy, yeah. we just got to work on some marketing, which is why he's talking about Facebook course right now. Uh, he got posting domination and I think he's a great candidate for one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. I think, I think he's, I think Billy, because he's done so many deals, he's been with us for so long. Yeah. I think flight school might be too basic for him. I That's think he's true. more, I think he's more one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and maybe he's like, even like a hybrid program. Where he gets all the automation tools, yeah, um, doesn't need as many calls probably as somebody who's just starting. So we could probably make something custom for Billy. Absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, so it's just you know you got to figure out what's most important for you. So on these yeah. calls, Billy can verify like I'm not pushing someone into something that's not appropriate for them, right? We want to make sure you are going to be successful, and to be successful, you got to be aligned with the right path. So right. that's kind of yeah. what I help people, you know, figure out, figure out the best path for them. Yeah. And, and really, I like to say, like, you know, when it comes to every individual is different, everyone's needs are different. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we have off the shelf coaching packages that we think most people can benefit from. But there are edge cases like Billy that we go ahead and we make something custom for them. 
And yeah. so I always like to say we have a coaching program for every budget. Um, ultimately, though, I think from the get go, you know, flight school is the best first option. And then after yeah. that, one on one, if if you feel like you need it. But um, and I think everybody needs it. Like I need it. Everyone needs it. Yeah, everyone, everyone needs a coach. I'm always going to be have a coach. I mean, yeah. you may not know it, you're still my coach. <laughs> <laughs> so Daniel Dival wants an extra twenty hours. How are we going to give Daniel yeah. an extra twenty hours? Uh boy, let's get a let's get a support team to back her up. And then... I mean, Danielle's got like a basketball team at home. <laughs> Those kids. Oh, man, let me laugh. <laughs> She's, you know, she's, yeah. she's running the, the VA team. She's, she's busy and she's, she's, she's going to uh, do the course with me. So, wow. It's going to be, yeah, she's busy. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know how we, how we get her an extra 20 hours. Let's just make these days longer. <laughs> Why? Well, yeah. yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That, that would be that would be great. Yeah, just freeing her up. Yeah, that's she's the grease in the gears. Yeah, yeah, exactly. She's laughing. Derek Marshall's <laughs> on. What's up, Derek? Agree with Ben. Yeah, convos over email and even texts improve a ton with just one phone call. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I was coaching uh, Mimi Schmidt on closing on Facebook one time, and that tip I just gave, where she had a lot of people right on the fence. And she sent every single one of them a little voice message saying, hey, the property is about to be locked up. Uh, you know, do you want this property or not? And she's, you know, I think I think she sold it. I, I don't want to say yes or no, but. No, she did. Pretty, she oh, she yes. Did. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. love when I help someone get a sale. Like, it's so much, it's such a better feeling than me getting a sale myself. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. I mean, it, it's it's great. It's great. It's, it's There's nothing better. So, um, listen, again, if you want to learn more, Go to www.thelandgeek.com forward slash training and, uh, and get on a call, yeah. right? If you're shy, you can go here. If you don't want to talk, just go on the webinar. If they want a message, that's cool too. Yeah, definitely webinar. They yeah. can also message, you know, uh, the m.me forward slash thelandgeek. Right. Right. So any other questions before I get on a call with the super geek herself, Danielle <laughs> Dybal? And if they have more questions and you're watching this on replay, just uh, put a question in the comments and I'll definitely see those and answer them as I'm able to. And get you moving forward in this business. You know, there's no reason to be stuck. There's so much community available here to keep you moving forward. Uh, if you're stuck, just reach out and ask for help. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, here's the last question before we get in. David, do you use a VA to automate your Facebook selling? Or do you do or do you manage this yourself? Big questions in the group. So there's two strategies I use with Facebook. Uh, the Facebook buy sell strategy, that is not automated automated. However, uh, Facebook posts with links back to your website, that can be automated. So that's just another way to get more traffic. Um, however, I only use that once in a while. Um, I definitely use the buy sell strategy when I have to liquidate a property. And hey, it's one to one hand combat. You know that's not going to be your your primary marketing tool. Like so, I have a full playbook of marketing. That's just one page. So I love Facebook. I also love Craigslist. I love LandMoto.com. You know <laughs> where yeah. I want to make a sale. Like I'm not married to one platform. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So. Um, you know, there's, there's, it's just getting better and better. It really is yeah. as far as automation. Um, I got blocked from groups. Billy, you went too crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So don't add more than a, maybe 12, 15 per day request to join. Otherwise you'll get put in timeout. Don't worry. Timeout ends. You'll be, you'll get lifted soon enough. All right. Fantastic. Well, listen, I want to thank everybody. Uh, for jumping on, Billy, Seth, Derek, Ben, of course, Danielle Dieball, hey, Danielle. Steve Harris, Aaron. Who else is on? Bryce. Thanks for your, your comments. Really appreciate it. Um, and uh, I hope you guys are getting value out of Coffee Talk. I know I'm, I'm enjoying it. David, are you enjoying this? Like I, I say this every week. I would do this with you if no one was watching, Mark. 
<laughs> It'd be kind of weird talking about the system to nobody, though. But <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the tone might be a little different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I definitely enjoy this. I, I, from the feedback of people, you know, they love this, these coffee talks. They look forward to them. So you're doing a good thing, Mark. All right. So are you, David. I appreciate it. Enjoy Venice Beach. Oh, man. Let's just, let me give you a nice look. Uh, you know what I'm going to do I'm next like, week? Next week, David, I'm going to go to a big parking lot. <laughs> and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to video from oh, my phone. Because David always hazy me <laughs> that like, he's in L.A. and I'm melting here in phoenix and i'm like yeah but i've got like everyone's gone like there's no traffic i can get in any restaurant it's 80, it's 80 degrees in the pool oh man so like when, like like you know at four o'clock i jump in the pool with the kids we hang out it's awesome but it's getting too hot so for the rest of july we're getting out that's funny. So, <laughs> so I will, I will yeah. be in your, your neck of the woods. That's funny. I'll send Mark a, a picture of the temperature comparing like 65 degrees here to his 165. And he's like, yeah, but I found parking this morning. Big deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, Billy's like, I missed Periscope. Yeah, I don't even Periscope anymore. Uh, because, Periscope is so 2016. Yeah, I'm just focused on uh, Facebook now. And uh, Derek Marshall, yes, absolutely love coffee talks from venice beach even better yeah this is awesome Thanks, for me too <laughs> awesome cool. all right everybody we'll look focus on your m&ms this week mailing and marketing 20 a day that will move the needle again don't be shy the landgeek.com forward slash training and um july flight school is filling up so get yeah on. it's filling up fast mark so get they in that quick yeah <laughs> that quick um and then boot camp for boot camps filled up for Scottsdale, but uh, for Orlando, we have I think twenty spots left, which is crazy because it's in October. So we're gonna have to figure out meet the demand somehow. We'll figure something out. We'll figure something out. Maybe we'll get yeah. a bigger room. There's Andrew in Venice. Go meet for oh Venice, Florida. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, well, close enough, right? Close enough. <laughs> Only a five-hour know. flight. No big deal. Yeah. Some, <laughs> someone's gonna drop the mic and be like I'm in Venice, Italy. No, 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 Sean Rickman would do that. I know, Sean's like, oh, yeah? I'm in Venice. He probably is in Venice. Yeah. I don't know who those guys are. I'm All right. <laughs> okay, let's get off this talk. Right we got to get off this yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Danielle, I'll see you in a minute. Okay. Right. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>